Hey guys, Neil Brown from Family First Life Achievers here in Nashville. And um, I want to take a few minutes here to talk about something that we really don't cover very often. I was having a conversation with an agent the other night. We were talking about things like COPD and some other cases. And um, I shared some things with him and it was the first time he had ever heard it. He said, man, I wish I would have heard that a while ago. So he said, could you do a little video on how you approach the underwriting and on final expense and what companies do you use? So that's the purpose of this. I'm just gonna spend a few minutes on uh, the products. You know, we talk in our system that 80% of our business is getting good on the phone and I would throw leads into that category. Um, it, it's getting good at the phones, getting good at leads. So if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the series, the eight part series, that Andrew Taylor and Zach Trudowski just finished, I would encourage you to go ahead, stop this video, jump over to that and go through, they cover every type of lead, what percentages of booking rates you can expect on every series of leads, it's excellent. So anyways, get through that. Also, uh, if you're watching this, you're probably getting ready to start running. And we have a small series on get ready to run with all the materials you'll need, all the downloads, the worksheets, the carrier list, and uh, that's really important to get started with. So anyways, 80% um, is getting good on the phone, 15% is getting good in the home, and then finally 5% is products, getting good at the products. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take a few minutes, we're gonna start with final expense, okay? Why final expense? Because um, when you get started, it's just the easiest kind of lead and the cheapest kind of lead you can get. It's out of the CRM. People are just looking to cover their funeral costs and it's a real easy thing to start with. So we, uh, we always say get in and out of 100 households as fast as you can and you'll learn how to underwrite, okay? So the first thing you need to do is when you get appointed with a carrier, they send you an email. You need to make sure that you've linked through the link that they've given you to their website and followed the instructions and gotten registered with the site. It does you no good to learn about products, to learn about leads, to learn about uh, how to get good in the home if you haven't logged into your websites and you can't write a policy. So when we got started, I remember MJ saying, you know, we need to get going. And I was like, well, what if somebody says yes? I was scared to death. How do you write an e-app? So anyways, there's plenty of practice locations you can go to and practice how to write an e-app, but it all starts with you gotta, you gotta log in to, to the website and register with it before anything. So anyways, assuming we've done all that and assuming we've uh, watched that eight part series from Andrew and Zach and uh, getting ready to run, we're gonna, we're gonna go down the final expense process. So I wanna tell you a quick story. Um, well, first of all, I want you to write down four carriers, Americo, Prosperity, Aetna, and AIG. And these are like the fundamental four we use when we get started. Um, the, we, we, we also have Mutual Omaha, great company. The problem when you're brand new is you gotta go entirely through the application before you find out at the end whether somebody can get the insurance or not. And you'll spend 40 minutes going through, like the other day, yet last night, in fact, I wrote a lady, went all the way through and she was denied at the end. And I jumped over to Prosperity, ran her through their interactive MIB, and I found out that they thought that she had COPD. She actually had significantly bad allergies and they were prescribing some inhalers that are used for COPD that, and she did not have COPD. So um, we got a chance to answer uh, no to those questions and they approved that policy. So it's a matter of time. It isn't a matter of anything else. It's just going into a home and being very methodical on your approach, getting in and out of there in a reasonable time frame. No one should ever spend two and a half hours in a house if you're, if you're equipped with the knowledge that we're gonna share with you here today. So when I go into a, to a house and we're not gonna cover what you do in the house, that's a, that's a different topic. But my number one go-to is Americo and I'm gonna do Eagle Premier. And the reason I'm gonna do this is that um, it takes about five minutes to run somebody through the MIB. It's very quick and easy. 
And uh, why that's important, by the way, the MIB is the Medical Information Bureau. Uh, they have all the prescriptions and um, the uh, procedures of individuals outside of, um, in regular me medicine, if they go to the VA, there's probably no records in there, but everybody else, all the records are up there. So we can take five minutes, we can answer two screens at Americo, hit submit, they sign it, it goes up there, it tells us whether they can get a policy. So it's quick and easy. I've run probably 1800 people through the MIB at Americo for final expense, Eagle Premier. And it's just the quickest way to get through it. The way I found this, I sat down with a woman, she had a page and a half single spaced of prescriptions. I used to write down every prescription. Um, I looked at that, I thought, you know, that's gonna take me a half an hour, 20 minutes to write this down. And I gotta ask her why she takes them, she'll have no idea. So I just said, heck, why don't I just run her through the MIB at Americo and let's let them determine whether any of these prescriptions are, are hazardous. Um, we did that and um, it, it approved her. I was stunned and that I said, from now on, I am not writing down another prescription. I'm gonna ask people about uh, their conditions only. So so anyway, so uh, Americo gives you a quick thumbs up or thumbs down. On their Eagle Premier, the reason I like it, it's a little bit more than other whole life, but the client doesn't know that, okay? So there's two main reasons why I write it. Number one, it's good for the client. If they have a $10,000 policy, they get killed in an accident, it pays double indemnity, it pays 20. If they're on a commercial vehicle uh, where they bought a commercial ticket and they die from an accident, uh, it pays triple indemnity, it pays 30. That's number one. Number two, with every client that I, that I sit down with, I cover these 10 points of um, whole life insurance. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I'll just zing through this. It's permanent coverage, it goes to 120 years old, so no one ever outlives it. The death benefit is guaranteed to remain level. If you've got a $10,000 policy, you'll never get a letter saying it's they're cutting it back to five. The premiums are guaranteed to remain level. If you're paying $59, now you're gonna be paying $59. It passes on to the beneficiary that you choose. It avoids probate. Uh, the death benefits paid out tax-free. Um, it doubles as accidental death. In other words, um, if you die from an accident or your heart gives out, it pays. In the case of uh, Eagle Premier, it pays double. And then it has what's called living benefits. A lot of people don't know this. They appreciate you taking time to explain it. Living benefits is you don't have to die to get money from your policy. Let's say you have a $20,000 um, whole life policy with Americo, it's Eagle Premier, and you get diagnosed with a terminal, um, a, um, uh, uh, you know, you have a heart attack, stroke, you, you have a critical illness or a chronic illness. Uh, depending on what it is, you can get a, a note from the doctor, send it to the company, and um, uh, they will, uh, in, in most cases, when, when it meets the criteria front, half the face amount on a $20,000 policy, 10,000 for their care, the other 10,000 is for their death benefit. So. These living benefits make a big difference. Nobody knows about it. Um, number nine, it builds cash value and it's immediately effective if approved. One thing people don't really understand is that anything that they buy over the television or usually in the mail, not in all cases, but in most, it comes with a two year wait period because they're not sending somebody like you or me out to lay eyes on the person to make sure they're not in hospice care or 900 pounds in bed ridden. So, um, I always explain these 10 points and the fact that we can get it, um, we're looking for what they call a level plan. They should have called that immediate. It goes into effect immediately versus a graded plan, which is a two year wait period. So um, also with Americo, a couple of benefits is that if you're a smoker, they give the non-smoking rates to smokers for three years. After three years, they send a swab and um, you have to swab your mouth. If there's no uh, nicotine, then they continue with the program. If there is, then they either lower the face amount and keep the premium the same or raise the face amount, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, raise the premium uh, appropriately for a smoking rate. So we write a ton of these. Now, for you as a brand new agent, the reason it's so important to write Americo, let's say, uh, let's say it's the 10th of any month. 
you sit down with somebody, usually final expense people are on social security disability or social security, they're on a fixed budget. Um, a week after they get their check, they're, they're pretty much out of money. So they always wanna start it, not always, but in most cases, if they don't have any money, no matter how hard you try and convince them, they're not gonna draft it immediately. So they're gonna draft it the following month on the first or the third when they get their check. Well, today's the 10th. That means with most carriers, you gotta wait uh, three, three to four, three weeks at least to get your check. With Americo, no matter when it drafts, they pay you in 48 hours. So let's play out a scenario. You and I just, we just worked on, on the CRM. You invested in a bunch of leads. You went ahead and uh, you know bought those on a credit card or whatever. Uh, you don't have a lot of money and uh, now you write a policy, you've got about $1,500 coming to you it would be nice to get it in two days, right? Because now you've turned 500 into 1500 on one sale, and now you have some money in the bank that you can reinvest in more leads to make sure. Now you're playing with house money. Uh, not all carriers do that. Most carriers will pay you when the product drafts, and that wouldn't be till next month. So Americo plays a really, really important part in, in you building your business because it pays those that compensation within two days, no matter when it drafts, okay? So on final expense, that's my go-to. Now let's play out a scenario. Let's say you ran somebody through Americo, you went through the underwriting. Now the underwriting that I usually do is on the worksheet. Now, if you don't have the worksheet that has the different conditions, I start with the head, I go, okay, let's start with the head. Do you have any um, Alzheimer's, dementia, or Parkinson's that you take any medication for? No. Have you had a stroke in the last 12 to 24 months? No. Um, are you a smoker? Yes or no? No. Do you have COPD? I'm going right down. Mike Schroeds taught me this. On your lungs, uh, do you have COPD? Now, a lot of people will say they have COPD, and I, I believe, I don't know this for sure, but I think that I've, I've come across enough uh, patients or enough clients that have gone to the doctor that smoke, and the doctors say, hey, listen, uh, if you don't stop smoking, you're going to get COPD. Um, a lot of these folks have a, an inhaler. It's an albuterol. And um, they tell you they have COPD. Well, I'm not going to accept that initial answer. I want to see all their inhalers. Most of them only have one. If they have one, then the question becomes, um, you know, why do you think you have COPD? You know, and you got to drill down on that. Most people, if they have just albuterol, it's for asthma, it's not for COPD, but if they have like three or four inhalers, um, you gotta read the box, and if it says COP, they do. COPD, they do. Reason that's important is that um, if, when you run them through the MIB, if they do have COPD, they will get rejected. Okay, so, um, and then I'll go to the heart. Any bypass surgeries, any stent placements, any congestive heart failure, um, any, any heart disease, and when people have stents, usually the reason we like Americo is, um, is if the stent was placed over 12 months ago or they had a heart attack or stroke over 12 months ago, we can usually get them covered. Um, if it's within 12 months, it's a different deal. So I'll do the heart, then I'll go any kidney or liver disease, any reoccurrence of cancer in the last 12 months. Okay, do you have any hepatitis C or HIV uh, in, in the last... Um, Five years, any DUIs, any reckless driving, okay? Any reoccurrence of cancer, I don't know if I said that. Okay, um, any diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Okay, if they have diabetes, you have all your fingers and toes. What I'm looking for specifically on the diabetes, if they take, met, take metformin, I'm really checking to see if they have diabetic neuropathy. America won't take diabetic neuropathy. Now, how do you learn all this stuff? One of the important things about what we do is um, we have these, these grid sheets. And if you can see that final expense grid sheet, you have to have these because it takes uh, every, every issue, um, whether it's bronchitis, whether it's COPD, and it breaks it down and it gives you the top carriers and who will write it. So you really need those, um, those tips. We have one for whole life, we have one for term. So um, once I finish uh, diabetes, you got all your fingers and toes. Um, you know, were you in any drug or alcohol rehab in the last 12 to 24 months? 
Once I finish that, I have a pretty good idea of whether I can get them through America or not. So let's say I run them through America, they get, it comes back, unfortunately, um, we cannot insure this person on a level plan, stop what you're doing. Okay, you're done with America at that point. If it comes back and it's approved, then you go ahead and you write that policy. And again, get over the fact that, um, you know, if you do any price comparison, some carriers are, are less money than America. When you're just getting started, it does not matter. The most important thing is to turn your money, it's good for the client, and reinvest that money, okay? Because it's the double and triple indemnity with Eagle Premier is a little bit more, it's just the way it is. Okay, if it comes back and you get denied, <clears throat> for instance, let's say they take, um, one of the common things we see is lisinopril, uh, is um, there's, there's uh, each drug has what's called an indication. A drug can have up to eight indications. Each indication is um, by the FDA on how that drug can be prescribed by a physician. It can be prescribed for high blood pressure, but also congestive heart failure. Lisinopril is one of those that when someone's taking it, uh, America automatically reads into that as they have congestive heart failure and they will deny that. Okay, so the second thing we do then, we pivot over to prosperity. And the reason that we do this is that prosperity, instead of an, a thumbs up or thumbs down. Now, by the way, when it comes back and it says that, unfortunately, you can't get it, you, you don't say to the client, ah, oh, God, you got denied. Because it depresses them. A lot of people will go, okay, okay, I, I'm not even interested anymore. Just let's, let's just forget it. So what you do, you just say, um, okay, so they're making a recommendation that we need to pivot to a different carrier. That's all you say. You go over to Prosperity. Prosperity, you'll need uh, an app called Aptical, and uh, you, you take a picture of their license and then it just drops all the information. And the reason we love Prosperity, and it's like my MVP carrier, is because when someone's taking lisinopril, or when somebody is taking, like last night I had this lady, um, and I put her through Mutual Omaha. I went all the way through Mutual Omaha. It takes 40 minutes to do that. And at the end, it said, unfortunately, we can't insure you. And um, you can't spend two hours in a home. And so I should have known. I just didn't think she had any health issues. But it turned out that she's taking three inhalers that are used for COPD, but she has severe, severe allergies. So. Uh, Mutual was reading their MIB read it as she has COPD. We can't insure her, and so I got. They made me go through the entire application, issued the policy number, and then below that said, "Unfortunately, we can't insure you." So that's a that's a mistake. You don't want to do that, okay? Because you'll freak out in the home. You'll be sweating bullets, and it'll look really negative. So instead of doing that. I pivoted it over to Prosperity, and when I when they checked the MIB, they came back with additional questions. We noticed that you're taking these inhalers. Are you taking it for COPD? And it gives you a chance to say no. It records that in the policy. And then um, also she had lisinopril for high blood pressure, and it came, uh, is it lisinopril or amylodipine? I think it's lisinopril. And um, it asked, uh, do you have, um, any arterial sclerosis or um, cardiomyopathy or all these heart conditions. And we were able to say no, and then it qualified her for a level plan. Now, it was a little bit more, um, but that's fine because um, we can get an immediate plan. Our goal is to try and get somebody life insurance that the day they pay for it, it's in effect. We wanna protect that family. So that's our, our job, okay. So I go to Americo first, run them through the MIB, takes five minutes. If it says, unfortunately, we can't uh, insure you, uh, then I pivot to Prosperity. I say, hey, they're recommending a, a different carrier. We're gonna pivot over to that carrier. I run them through Prosperity. It's usually where that meeting ends. They get a policy and we're done, okay? The only tricky nuance with Prosperity is when you initially submit it, because it's a third-party vendor to Prosperity, Aptical, they give you an application number. Within two days, Prosperity will issue a policy number. In general, 99.999% of the time when you submit it to Prosperity and they accept it, it's a done deal, they're accepted. Very, very rarely does it get sent to underwriting or it gets rejected. So um, now, Aetna, 
That's the third carrier. Now, why do we use Aetna? We use Aetna for three specific reasons. And again, we're talking about final expense, whole life. The 10 points, make sure you find this brochure, download it because these 10 points are just really, really effective. The client has to understand the product and they have to kind of like you and it has to be affordable uh, and they have to understand like how you fit in to, with Family First Life and the whole nine yards. So all those pieces go together to keeping, um, keeping your policies on the book. So let's talk about Aetna. Um, Aetna, um, the, the benefit of Aetna, number one, is that they will write up to 90 years old or 89, I can't remember if it's 89 or 90, but up until this point, when COVID hit, we had a tough time if somebody were over 80 years old, getting them insured, Aetna will do it all the way up to 89. That's number one. Number two, most companies, if you have COPD, you can't get people an immediate plan. They have to go to a graded plan. Aetna will insure them immediately. It's not at their preferred rate, it's at their standard rate. It's a little bit higher, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and so you can, you can insure them if they have COPD, that's our go-to. And then number three is, um, what is the third thing with that? And I'm just trying to think of, um, don't have the point. COPD up to 90 years. Oh, I know the third thing. Oh, how could I forget this? Um, they don't ask height and weight. So if you walk into a house and you have somebody that's five foot, 380 pounds, in the old days, we would just have to walk out of there. Or if they were over 50 years old, we would have to write them an AIG guaranteed issue. Um, if they were under 50, we were in trouble. We had nothing we could write. Well, America, I mean, I'm sorry, Aetna goes down to age 40. It starts at age 40 and it doesn't ask for height and weight. So if you run into somebody that's really big, um, that's not gonna fit anybody's build chart, you can go to Aetna. And if they're over 40 years old, you can write them. So Aetna is really, we do a lot of business with Aetna. We're number one with most of our carriers. Now, when you get in a situation, the fourth kind of go-to is AIG. When you get into a situation with um, uh, people have several things, you walk in and they have kidney disease and they're going to die out, they're getting dialysis. That's number one. Number two, let's say they just had a stroke or they had cancer within 12 months. That's the second one. Number three, they have congestive heart failure. That's just a tough one to get insured. Um, or they've had a major procedure in the last 12 months. Then we use AIG. AIG is a guaranteed issue. It takes five minutes to write the application. It's a two year waiting period uh, to in order to, to get the product. Um, so, so it's just return a premium, meaning that if they pass away within 24 months, they get all the money that they paid back in premium plus 10% interest. It's like paying into a savings account. Um, and then after on the 25th month, if they pass away, uh, it, it pays the full face amount. Let's say it's 20 grand. If they walk to a mailbox and they get hit by a car on day one, it pays the full face amount. Accidents are covered. Um, it also has, you know, the living benefits and that kind of thing. But so I ran into a guy the other night, two nights ago, and I underwrote him. It was actually a call in mortgage protection lead and he needed AIG. And so I told him this, I said, when did you have your stent put in? And he said, it was, a, it's going to be a year this coming September, next September. Okay. We're in the new year now we're in, but anyways, next September. I said, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come see you next September. Let's put this AIG policy in place. Let's wait on your anniversary date, a year from the time you had the stent put in. And I'm gonna come back, we're gonna sit down, I'm gonna run you through the MIB and let's see if we can get you a policy. Um, and so if we can run him through and he's, you know, a year's gone by, chances are we'll be able to write him a policy with Americo. Uh, I run into that situation a lot of times where people um, have had a procedure, they had to get an AIG. I come and they fill out another form thir 13 months after that AIG, I run them through the MIB and they're approved. So uh, we love AIG. The downside is it pays very low comp. It's like 50% of what is normal, but hey, it's about the client, we can, we can help them, okay? 
So that is, that's like my major four. And what we're going to say is when you're in the home, you know, um, you, 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 there's a procedure and how we do things. We always fill out the customer worksheet. Nobody else does that. That sets you apart. That helps you collect a lot of information that'll help you close the sale. And then before you quote them pricing, you call a manager and um, they'll tell you what to write. Um, if there's no manager available, your go-to is Americo. If you get denied from Americo, hey, they suggested another carrier, pivot to prosperity, and, um, and then give them pricing. The reason for that is that if you give them all this pricing, and a lot of people when they're new sell on price, it's the worst thing you can do, but they do, and they don't sell value, they don't sell the product, they don't go out and give them features and benefits and that kind of thing. Well, what ends up happening is if they get denied in the MIMB, now you gotta, you gotta say, forget those prices I just showed you. We've gotta go to this product and it's a third more. And usually it just, um, you know, keeps you from completing the sale. So it's a very negative thing. So, um, now I'm just, so let's, so that's final expense. That, those are the fundamental four in getting started. That's the way to go. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it because I wanna keep this short, but let me just touch briefly on mortgage protection. Mortgage protection, I'll never forget, I wrote my first full year of final expense and uh, Mike Schrotz said, hey, I got some counties that are coming available up in the Nashville area. I'm like, I'm just getting good at this. I don't wanna switch. And he said, no, you need to because your average policy is pretty small and we need to get increase that. So I went into mortgage protection kicking and screaming. Um, but there, there are, um, there's kind of two ends of the market on mortgage protection. You're 20, 30, 40, and even 50 year olds. And then you get into the 60, 70 and 80 year olds that have over $300,000 mortgages. Okay. And so it's two different strategies, but, um, just, just, Taking the younger people, um, I'm gonna show you this, I don't know if this will translate, but across that top line, you're gonna see three main carriers that, that I use for mortgage protection. It's Americo, Ucha Omaha, and John Hancock. Um, some people use AMAM. Uh, I just like those three. Um, what I'll typically do when I sit with somebody, I'll go through the worksheet, and then I'll explain to them that uh, life insurance is, is state regulated. Um, it's kind of like gasoline. Uh, you don't see an Exxon station and a Thornton's right across the street and there's a dollar per gallon difference between the two. They're all pretty much the same and you have to remove some things to lower the price. And so the reason I do Americo is I like the fact that they have 100% living benefits. I'll spend a few minutes going through what that means, what are living benefits. And then there's also a sheet that you can download um, about mortgage protection that gets into the fundamentals right there of the living benefits. And so basically living benefits is that you don't have to die to get money out of your policy. And this is what separates regular life insurance from mortgage protection are the living benefits. Um, and so I explained that Americo uh, will pay up to, they have formulas that they use, but they'll pay up to 100% of living benefits. So if you have a $100,000 policy, you can get up to $100,000, depending on your age and several other issues. Mutual Omaha will do 80% and John Hancock will do 50%. So I'll ask them which you think is the least expensive. And they'll say John Hancock, you know, and, and uh, not in all cases, but usually I'm generalizing, I'm kind of painting a picture on why my go-to is gonna be Americo. Um, Americo has the best smoking rates. They have uh, several different products. They do cash back options. They do regular term 125. Um, you can do it for 15, 20, 25, 30. In general, the way that term works, it's kind of like term is the entry level least expensive. When you have a lot of debt, you should have term coverage to cover your debt. So if something happens to you, it's not like going to a restaurant where you have a big meal and then you sneak out the back door and don't pay your bill. This way, everything is covered uh, and your surviving family um, has resources um, so they don't go bankrupt, basically. I mean, it's 
people's lives turn around with life insurance. We have several agents in our agency that the whole reason they're agents is they had a family member pass away and they had life insurance and they saw what a difference it made to their moms or their families and they didn't lose their house and that kind of thing. So it's, it's a tremendous thing. So, um, you know, they fill out a form, you're going to go see them. Um, you're not going to be running a lot of mortgage protection in the beginning. Um, as time goes on, um, and as you buy second chance mortgage protection on the CRM, there are really in-depth uh, videos uh, on, on how to do mortgage protection. The purpose of this is not uh, to teach you every aspect of mortgage protection. It's really to draw a distinction between final expense and term. And so let me do that real quick. So the difference between final expense and term insurance, um, as far as an underwriting standpoint goes, is that you can you have to be really healthy to get term. Okay, you have to. Um, you can't ever have had cancer. Uh, well, at least not in the last ten years. John Hancock will write cancer if it's been over ten years. Nobody else will. You can't have had a stroke, any heart disease. Those are automatic declines. You can't have any RA rheumatoid arthritis. There are several things that are an automatic knockout, okay? So you just have to really uh, be good at your underwriting, ask the right questions. You can't have hepatitis C. There's some carriers like John Hancock that will go back and, ha and write hepatitis C. Um, and these are the things you learn as you're out in the field and you use your term grid sheets. We call them the cheat sheets. They're so valuable. And as you, um, in every home for your first 15 homes, you know, you're on the phone with your manager getting uh, uh, advice on what product to write. Um, so just, um, so you have to be really healthy to get term insurance. And I write a ton of America 125, qualify for the uh, extra. They have a 8% bonus on all your business that you write. This last um, bonus period, I was just a skosh under 60,000. My check was like 4,800 bucks and it's just over and above, it just comes to you, it's awesome. And so um, I take advantage of that. I run a lot of mortgage protection. Uh, the two markets in mortgage protection are 20, 30, 40 year olds. And then you get into 50 is kind of the pivot year, 60, 70 and 80 year olds, completely different strategy. It's a final expense strategy, we call it a bridge program. Um, and uh, Matt Smith does an amazing program, also John Wetmore on how to sell um, final exp or, um, mortgage protection to seniors. I just did it last night, wrote, wrote a, uh, his and hers. Um, and that's again, not the purpose of, of this video. But um, I don't wanna go into much detail because this isn't where you're gonna be spending your time. You're gonna be spending it on final expense. So let me wrap up on one more word on final expense. <clears throat> um, we have a gentleman, a young guy in the office here. He's only 25 years old. And we asked him, he's uh, from Paul McLean's office, Evan. And we asked him, Evan, you know, you did $80,000 in February. So come and talk to us about how you did it. So anyways, we learned something really valuable. You're always learning in this business. So he said, you know, a big part of that was replacement business. Repl so in other words, he goes into a home. Um, there's a video out by a guy named Josh on how they would uh, book policy reviews. And he would just simply call someone and they say, I already took care of it. And he'd say, well, that's exactly why I'm calling. Uh, when you set up a policy, you usually get a policy packet in the mail. Did you get your policy packet? And uh, they'll say, yes. So, okay, so typically they send somebody out. There's a couple things that need to be done yet and to make sure that when you have a claim down the road that that, um, that claim goes through right away. And so um, have that policy out. This will just take five minutes. Okay, and I'll see you tomorrow between nine and 10. And then he goes out there and um, studies the policy. Now what Evan did, and the reason he replaced so many policies is when people are in their 50s, primarily their 60s, from 60 to 70, that's kind of the target audience on um, on final expense. And so when people are in that age group and they buy a whole life product, I don't care who they buy it from, uh, it's expensive because term is the cheapest insurance, universal life is in the middle 
about a third more than term. And then at the top is whole life. And whole life is priced that way because they know they're gonna pay a claim. So what he would do, what he suggested, and I started doing this, is that he suggested um, do the underwriting. If they're healthy, you can go to Mutual Omaha and you can write an IUL, uh, Index Universal Life. And the great thing about an IUL is that it's a permanent product, but it, you can go a little bit higher in the value. So typically someone that has a $10,000 policy, uh, that's a whole life policy, you can get them 25, somewhere between 25 to 35,000 in total coverage for the same price. Because an, an IUL tends to be about a third less than um, a whole life policy. So just a real simple way, and it's a great product. It's a permanent product, um, guaranteed to, I wanna say 20 years. Um, don't quote me on that, but it's, um, it, it's a third less than whole life. Very simple, but they gotta be healthy. Can't have had a stroke, heart attack, cancer, that kind of stuff. But anyway, so, um, you know, focus on that because you, as you start calling, you're going to get a lot of people who say, I already took care of it. And you need to be prepared to be able to offset that comment. So guys, 80% of our business is on the, getting good on the phone, booking appointments and leads. If you haven't watched that eight part series um, with Andrew and Zach, get that, watch it right away. 15% is getting good in the home. And uh, there's a series called uh, Get Ready to Run. Make sure you watch that. Make sure you have all your materials. 5% is product. Um, the way we do it, Americo, Pivot to Prosperity, Aetna, if you need it. And then in, in certain cases, congestive heart failure, cancer, stroke within the last 12 months, dialysis. You're, you got to pivot to AIG, write that policy, and move on to the next client. So it's all about protecting families and helping clients. And I hope that this video kind of gives you an overview, a plan of attack. Um, you're gonna get an education like you can't believe in underwriting if you don't quit. And you just gotta get in and out of 100 homes as fast as you can. And uh, we did that. And uh, boy, so many people I came across in the field over the years, they just quit, you know? And there's a lot of agents in this area of Nashville um, they come and go. And uh, we just decided that when we were gonna start this business, we were not gonna quit because we didn't have any choices. And it really, it was the best business decision we ever made. Um, and I hope you do the same. It just takes a, an attitude. Uh, we're very thankful uh, that we didn't quit. We, you know, no matter what, we're gonna make this thing happen. And, um, you know, here we are now as vice presidents moving on. Uh, we have new agents coming on every day, including you if you're watching this. We just appreciate you. Hang in there. There's a learning curve. You're going to feel stupid sometimes, uninformed, but this is not rocket science. People fill out a form. They want to hear from an agent. Some people will say F you. Some people will be thankful that you called. You're looking for the people who are thankful. Okay. So anyways, if you have any questions, give me a buzz. I gave you my email, neilmbrown at comcast.net. Uh, my number is 615-730-2056. Have a great day.